Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee. Today we are in what I call my homesteading room. If you've been with me for a while, you may have seen the video where I turned our downstairs spare bedroom into what I'm calling my homesteading room. This is where I have my seed starting set up. This is where I store my food that I can and um, dehydrate and things like that. I have a closet over here where I store all of my um, homesteading supplies like my dehydrator, my canners, extra jars, things like that. It's also where I have my computer desk. I sit in here to do my editing and my computer work and things like that. Over the winter time, this room has gotten out of control. It is an absolute disaster in here. I have um, soil all over the floor from my various seed starting projects. I've got boxes in here. I've got um, food that I never got to that is um, decaying and rotting that I need to throw away. It is just stuff everywhere, disorganized. It's a mess. Um, and that's fine. I'm not being hard on myself or anything. It happens, right? I mean, this is a space that's lived in. I use this space. I'm often in a hurry and things just get put places and not properly managed. But now it's time to go through and clean and organize. And so I just figured I'd turn the camera on today and show you guys um, the state of things and give you a nice before and after of this room after it is nice and clean and organized. We're also going to start some more seeds today and get that going. And um, the purpose behind me wanting to come in here and get this all nice and clean and organized is that, well, it's May and we're about to get into the busy gardening season. A, I'm not going to have time to do this later. And B, I want things to be nice and organized so that when it comes time for me to start canning and dehydrating, I'm ready to go. I know where my supplies are. I know where everything is and I'm not having to kind of wade through the mess to figure things out. It's going to be a lot easier and it's going to empower me to get more done when I am setting myself up properly. So we're going to go ahead and organize today. cup of water I have some pea seeds that are soaking. At the end of this video we're gonna do a little project. Um, if you watched my video titled I have a confession to make I talked about how my seeds that I started this year really did not do very well at all. I listed several reasons why I think that may be the case. One of which was I think I may have gotten some bad soil. I used two different types of soil both of which are over here. So we are going to do a little test. Beans and peas sprout very quickly and will very quickly show you if the soil that they're in is any good. So we are going to do a little test at the end of this video. But in the meantime, I have these soaking because if you soak your bean and pea seeds before planting them, they actually sprout a little faster. All I did was sweep and it already looks so much nicer in here. So I'm gonna continue on because we have to get all the way to this back wall with our cleaning and our organizing and there's more to be done. Okay, now here's a great example of where not being organized gets a little out of hand. <laughs> so I'm gonna take you with me. So over here, this I plan on trying to fill with canned food this year, but in the meantime, I just used it to kind of store some dry goods. And I also had some vegetables on it from last year, including some butternut squash. This butternut squash is actually still holding in really well. This one on the other hand, oh, I don't even wanna touch it is not. Oh, so gross. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's so gross. All right. I've known that this was in here for some time now, and I have been avoiding dealing with it. And because of this, I actually have, ah! 
I actually have not been coming into this room. I have a few videos lined up to edit that I filmed that I have not edited because it stinks in here. It smells like there's something rotting in here. And there is <laughs> that butternut squash. Also down here, I have some onions that are rotting. The, this, is a, this is bad. This down here, these are all rotted. Some of them have sprouted and are now beyond sprouting and are just straight up rotted. And you know what? That's really a shame. The butternut squash, meh, I can live without. But onions, that's a shame. That's just me being lazy because as soon as I realized those were starting to go, I should have diced them and put them in the freezer. I could have, there's probably 20 onions down there that I could have diced up and had usable in the freezer. And you know, again, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself. Things happen, things get away from you. Sometimes we waste, but Let's not do that. I'm gonna really try this year to keep up with my food storage and either use or properly process whatever I have before it starts to go bad because not only is that food wasted, but that's gross. I have rotting onions in the bottom of my food storage area. That's disgusting. So I definitely want to do a better job this year. Luckily, I did not grow that butternut squash and I did not grow those onions. So the heartbreak is a little less, but still, that's no excuse. Like I should not be letting food rot away in my home setting room. So we're gonna do a little better this year handling that. So I threw that butternut squash out. Let's get these onions thrown away. And then I'm gonna move this butternut squash that's still good into my kitchen and think about using that. Was absolutely disgusting. There are a few onions that are actually still in like decent shape. I'm gonna cut into them and see if they're salvageable. The rest of those, I mean, some of them had started to turn into soil. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down, let it sit for a little while, and we'll get it all cleaned up. So I actually have this onion bag that some of those onions down there came in. I bought this at the farmer's market last year. This is an excellent bag. I'm gonna keep this because I'm growing a lot of onions this year and I'll be able to store quite a few of them in here and I'll be able to hang it up here or something like that. So we're gonna hang on to that. Now, I have a lot of my dry goods stored on these racks and that's fine for now, I can leave that. But this top rack up here, I have a different plan for. So here I have a shelf liner and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size and get it up here so that we can start actually functionally using this for what I intended it to be used for. So I'll be honest, I don't love this. It's very, like it's not, these little tabbies, I, I get it, but like they're not really properly holding this down. So my hope is, you know, it's new, it's not worn in, uh, not settled in. So I'm hoping that um, once I fill this with stuff and it's being held down, it will eventually kind of relax and let go. It stinks in here. It smells like vinegar and rotting onions which is exactly what's down here so i'm actually gonna it's so cold so cold today um but i need to get some fresh air in here so i've got these these little windows they're not full-sized windows in this room they're like half windows and i've got one here and also above my computer so i'm gonna go ahead and open these and just get some fresh air in here because it stinks Blech. so now i can show you what i was actually planning on using this for So I own 
a ton more jars than this. The reason I have these here specifically is because these jars all contained food that I've eaten over the course of the last several months, I guess. And as I would wash the jars, run them through the dishwasher, I would place them um, face down like this um, on my dining room table. And they've been on the dining room table for a very long time. And I'm, I don't get sick of looking at things like that, but I'm sure Tom's probably sick of looking at it. So I said, you know, now it's time to put them where they belong. They don't belong on the dining room table. So um, the reason I have them in here face down like this is because these have been sanitized. These have been run through um, a sanitized cycle in the dishwasher and have been sanitized and have been face down since they came out of the dishwasher. So I will be able to feel good about just pulling these jars off the shelf, giving them a quick rinse maybe, and um, using them to can food. Uh, and so that's why I have these out here and I don't have all of my store-bought jars out here. They are over here in this closet, which we will be looking at in a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna want to do is, uh, as I use the food that I can, I will sanitize the jar, put it here, and I'll be able to keep a constant switch in and out um, because again, I'll want to have my canned food on you know, either this top shelf or the bottom shelf down here. Pro this top shelf will probably be reserved for clean jars and then down here on this shelf, I'll put my canned food, uh, whatever I can't fit over here. So I think that's gonna be my system. I'm still figuring all that kind of stuff out because this is only my second year doing this. So I'm just trying to see what works, but I like this. This seems like a really great system. I think it'll work out really well. So this is great. This was really my big thing I wanted to do today was get the shelf liner and get the jars in here and get them out of the dining room. So now this over here, this is already organized. We organized this together not that long ago. Um, and I actually went back through recently and kind of organized it again. And I've just been slowly picking away at this and slowly using, I've used a lot of what's in here. However, I do wanna go ahead and grab a couple of things. I wanna grab a jar of peaches. This is gonna be my snack today. And I'm gonna grab a jar of pears as well. I have a lot of pears and a lot of um, peaches that I honestly have not really been working through. I, I should have made more of an effort to eat them. I have several jars of both left. I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the kitchen and I will snack on these over the next couple of days uh, because I really do wanna be more intentional about working through what's in here so that I can make room when it's time to start canning this year's produce. Ooh, so excited. Next up, we're gonna shift our focus over here to this table. This table is supposed to be my workspace in here and instead I've just let it collect junk and I haven't been using it for what it's meant to be used for. So I want to go ahead, clear this off, clean it up, and we're gonna use it as a workspace today when we do the, the experiment at the end of this video. So some of these things can go straight to the kitchen. Oh, look at this, um, Tom's aunt, so my aunt-in-law, Aunt Paula, uh, drew me this, painted it, I guess, for Christmas, and it's a little chicken. So I have one of her other paintings right here. I love them. I think they're so pretty. So I think I want to put this one like right here. So this has been sitting in here. So let's, we can go ahead and get this up on the wall today. Here, here, maybe, maybe here. I'll figure it out. Um, so we're going to do that. Anytime I'm at the store and it catches my eye, I always stop and buy a pack of lids because in the past they've been difficult to come by and I don't want to deal with that. I just want to always have lids. So anytime I would buy anything homesteading related, I would come in and just throw it on this table and forget about it. So I really have to make an effort to not do that and stop and take the two seconds it takes to put things where they belong. Oh look, I just noticed another one. I have another pack of lids on this table. <laughs> hey, that's pretty cool. I got two packs of lids. goodness you guys the difference that it makes in here it looks so much better and I'm creating a space that I actually want to spend time in because that was the issue I was avoiding it in here because it was dirty um, but now it's much better so I'll be able to get in here and really get some good work done next up I'd really like to show you this closet but unfortunately it's really hard for me to get in here with the camera because it's 
a very small area. It's right by my desk, so it's hard to really get in here. I'll try my best to organize and show you as I go. Let's see, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I've got my roaster pans down in here. Great place to keep them. I'm really happy I decided to do that. I've got my Excalibur dehydrator. I've got both of my canners. I've got my vacuum sealer up here. Here, let me see if I can show you that. Up top here, yeah, look at that. Got my vacuum sealer, I've got my canners over here, my extra food saver bags and stuff. I've got all my extra jars in here, quite a few actually, which is exciting. I've got my um, overflow kitchen appliances in here. Like um, I've got this neat little food chopper that I use for chopping tomatoes and onions in the summertime because I get so tired of chopping tomatoes and onions in the summertime. So I use this guy. I've got my um, apple peeler in here. I've got a spiralizer. I keep my extra kitchen aid attachments and whatnot in here. So this is a really excellent closet. Um, it's, a, it's a great use of this space for sure. Um, I really, really like having this closet. And actually it's not in too bad of shape. As you can see, it looks pretty organized. I've got like things together. It's in pretty good shape. So I'll go ahead and close this up because that's fine. I'm pretty happy with that. I have no issues with that. So the only thing left in here that I need to clean is my desk and I'm, I'm just gonna do that myself. It's, you know, paperwork and stuff like that. Um, and then what else? One more thing. So up here at the at the top, it's hard. I can't really make the camera go any higher. At the top of my food shelf, I have um, I have these big pretzel containers my mom gave me, and I store my extra lids and rings in there. And I started another one a little while ago. So I'm gonna go in the dining room where I had those extra jars. I also have the rings. And so I'm going to go and put them in this jar. I like this idea. I love that my mom gave me these. I, at the time when she asked me if I wanted them and I said yes, I really wasn't sure what I was gonna do with them, but I had a feeling that I'd use them. And I've used, this is, I've got two more empty ones and having them for extra lids and rings has been a, a great idea. Okay, wish me luck because I'm going to clean that nasty onion stuff down here and it's going to be terrible. Even if all I did today was come in and clean those onions and get that butternut squash out of here, that alone would have made this room more tolerable <laughs> to be in. Um, so I'm really glad that we got that done today. That was disgusting. I can't believe that I let that get that bad. But anyway, done now, cleaned out. Um, already smells so much better in here. Um, I am going to let that dry and I'm gonna go back over it. I think I'm actually gonna bring one of my scrub daddies in here and like really scrub it really good, maybe even with some soap, because I actually would really like to store my dry goods that I have over here on this shelf down there because I really, really wanna use these shelves over here for my canned goods. And so I have more than enough room down in this very bottom shelf here to store these dry goods. The last thing I wanna do is go through and do one more really good sweep in here, get everything swept up. I'm gonna go through with my Swiffer and do the floors. I know that's gonna make it smell a lot better in here too. And then we can go ahead and get started with the experiments and the projects that I wanted to do at the end of this video. So I came down here with my scrub daddy, like I said I would, and I finished cleaning down there. I got a bunch of more gunk up and I feel really good about how clean that bottom shelf is now. I think it's fine to put stuff on. But as I was down there, I was like, <laughs> It still stinks. Why do I still smell stink? Where is it coming from? I peeked my head under, like underneath on the floor and found a rogue <laughs> clove of a uh, head of garlic and uh, it's like totally rotted on the inside. It's still like got, it's, it's still whole and like has its shape, but on the inside it's like squishy and gross. Ah! So I think that's where it was coming from. So I think we got all the stinkiness out of this room. Thank goodness. All right, now let's move on to the experiment. So I purchased two different types, two different products to start my seeds with this year. I started with the Espoma Organic Seed Starting Mix that I have right here. And then the other one was this Kellogg 
all natural potting mix. Now this one tricked me and this is very interesting considering how much I've talked to you guys about labeling and marketing and how you have to be very careful. This one says organic seed starter. This one says all natural potting mix and down here it says organic plus. You see this little this little thing right here, this says plus organic nutrients. So this is not fully organic. This has organic components. This is labeled organic seed starter. I don't 100% know how it works because neither of these have a USDA organic label. I think that's just for food. I don't think that extends as far out as things like soil. Um, so I have a feeling this one is my culprit. I have a feeling this is the one that is no good, but we're gonna test them both. I have two separate containers here. I'm going to add um, the uh, Kellogg soil to one and the Espoma soil to another. I'm gonna start the exact same seeds in both and we're just gonna see what happens. Um, and that will tell us if either of them were an issue, which one was the issue, um, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Probably gonna make a mess again. Probably gonna have to sweep again. It's fine. Also, this is a potting mix. This is a seed starting mix. So the potting mix is going to be a lot barkier. It's gonna have bigger pieces in it. Normally, if we were doing this test with something like, I don't know, a small flower seed or a celery seed or something like that, I'd be concerned. But these are peas that we're talking about. These are gonna be able to power through either one. I'm not too worried about that. Um, this one is supposed to have more nutrients, whereas this one is lighter, fluffier, more ideal for seed starting. Part of the reason that I think this one is my issue is because other than the fact that I did all around have a lower germination rate than last year, when my seeds sprouted, they did okay. It really wasn't until I up potted that I started to run into a big issue. And this is what I used to up pot because again, this has a, uh, is more nutrient dense. It's not as soft and fluffy and the plants with established root systems don't need light and fluffy, they need nutrients. So that was kind of what happened here. So I'm thinking this one's gonna be my issue, but we'll see. So ideally what you would do is, is take whatever you're gonna start your seeds with and add it to some kind of container and um, put water in it to moisten your soil. However, I'm using this right now for something else. So I didn't do that. Um, this is dry, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and um, place it in a, both of them, in a container with water, bottom water them, and I'll water them from the top. Um, it'll be okay. But normally when you are starting seeds, you'd want to use a soil that has been moistened. I digress. So look at the difference between them. This is a seed starting mix, this is a potting mix. Um, this one is light, fluffy. This one is um, heavier, but more nutrient dense. We're gonna start, it, it really doesn't matter because that's not what we're looking at here. We are not comparing that. And again, with this being a pea, or if we were using beans, um, I don't think that these would have an issue starting in either of those. In fact, I've started my peas outside just in garden soil and they sprout out there just fine. So I'm not worried about that at all. I'm gonna go ahead and make a hole probably about half an inch deep here in each. My peas have been soaking now for a little over an hour. Ideally, you would wanna do like, I've soaked them as, as long as four hours before. You can even soak them overnight, um, but it's just a little something just to kickstart them. I don't need to label these because again, they're very obvious. They are very different looking, like night and day. So I, I don't need to label them or anything. I know which one is the seed starting mix and which one is the potting mix. All right, here I have a Tupperware container that's got some filtered water down in the bottom of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and place each of these right in here. And then also, I have a spray bottle here also with filtered water and I'm gonna go ahead and spray the top and top water as well, just this first time, just to make sure that they're really getting since I didn't have, if I had my soil moistened properly, I wouldn't be doing this, the spray bottle, but I'll go ahead this first time just to make sure that they're really getting watered in well. And then I'm gonna place them underneath one of my grow lights here. And we'll let this go. 
and see what happens. I'm really excited to see um, how this goes. Now here's my problem. I want to start some more seeds. I have some more pea seeds here that I want to start. I have some other things that I never got to germinate that I would like to try and start. Um, but I don't have any uh, soy, uh, seed starting mix that I can trust. However, I did get five yards of garden mix soil delivered a couple weeks ago, and I have a bit of that left. So I went outside. This is my, my, my seed starting bucket that I always mix my seed starting mix in. Um, and I filled it. Well, I didn't fill it. I put it about a little less than halfway with um, my garden mix soil. Now, this is not an ideal soil for starting seeds, not by a long shot. It is very dense. It's got a lot of... Um, big chunks in it and things. So it's really not, it's got some rocks in there, not ideal. However, if I'm going to start any seeds, I have no choice. I can either take my chances and go find a seed starting mix that I still don't know how effective it's going to be, or I can use what I have that I know works. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put in a heavy amount of perlite in with this garden soil, a heavy amount, a lot. If you don't know, perlite is, um, I don't actually know what it is. I don't know what it's made out of, but it improves drainage and aeration in potting mixes. And um, it just helps keep the soil from, oh yeah, right here, helps prevent soil compaction. This is what we want. This is why you use a seed starting mix when you start seeds. The seed only has so much energy to get to the surface and get light um, to sprout. <coughs> and so if you use a soil that's too dense, too compact, then you're not giving your seeds a fighting chance. And so that's why I'm adding the perlite in here with the soil. It's going to just increase the chances that our seeds that we start are going to have the energy that they need to make it to the top of the soil, to the light. From there, they are able to photosynthesize and get more energy and grow. This is an experiment, honestly. I don't know if this is even gonna work, but there's a few things that I'd like to try <laughs> and start again because there are some things that I didn't get anything at all. The good news is if we can get them to sprout, if we can create a situation where they sprout, this is a garden mix. So it's like 75% topsoil, 25% um, compost. And so it's gonna be a lot more nutrient rich than a seed starting mix. So our, our seeds have a really good chance of being super healthy and robust if we can get them to sprout in this mix. So I think this might be worth trying because honestly, if I like this and I can get this to work, then I'm just going to do this from now on. I'll just order like a yard or so of um, garden mix from these people. Or maybe I'll see if, because this is my second year purchasing from them, next year will be my third. They might even let me come and just order like a few like totes full. I wonder if they'd let me do that just so I can start my seeds with it. And I don't have to keep worrying about, you know, are these products contaminated or yada yada. Um, or, you know, maybe I'll, so I think Becky from Acre Homestead used Vermont compost this year. Maybe I'll try that next year. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I'm not just going to go buy whatever it is they've got at the store again, because that screwed me. I'm not doing that again. All right. So that looks good. Next, I'm going to add some water because you do want your seed starting mix to be wet. I didn't with the peas because I didn't have a, a bucket to put it in. This is my seed starting bucket, but I'm going to for these next um, seeds that I start because uh, that's really the way to do it. You want your soil that you're starting your seeds in to be moist. So they're immediately receiving water. These are one of my Bootstraps uh, Farmer 72 cell trays. I switched to these halfway through the season this year, the seed starting season. I, look at that, that's like mud, oh no. <laughs> like I said, this is an experiment. Here, I'm gonna add a little bit more pearl. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know if this is gonna work, you guys. We're gonna try. You know, that's the thing. I've had more failures than successes this year, but I'm just trying to learn, really, truly. I want to improve and get better, and the only way you can do that is just by pushing through and keep, what do I always say? Keep moving forward, keep trying. Keep improving and just do the best you can and you'll grow. Your skills will improve. You'll get better. You'll find what works for you. 
I don't want to be one of those people that gives advice but doesn't take it herself. I want to take my own advice. So this is me doing that. I'm trying. I'm moving forward. I'm pushing on. I'm trying something else, trying to find what works. All right, you guys, I took a little break and had some lunch. And now I'm back. So this has dried a little. It's, it was really, really wet. I mean, like goop. So now it's dried a little. I, I really don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea if this soil is going to allow anything to, to sprout. It's definitely a lot more dense than what I would recommend for seed starting. But it's an experiment. Let's find out. So I went through my seeds and picked out what I wanted to plant. First, I, of course, have to do the rest of my peas. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. I don't know how many I have. I think I have at least two rows worth. Got a little Sharpie that I'm going to use to put a hole in each of these. Again, about a half an inch. Now these have been soaking a little longer because I've been away. And they're definitely getting um, hydrated and plump. So that's partly how you can tell. And because of that, they will germinate a lot faster. These are the last of my pea seeds. So if I, um, I'm either gonna need to seed save or I'll need to purchase more next year. I have a lot more of these than I thought I did. This is using half my tray. And if we have those germinate, I'm about to have a lot of peas. But that's okay, I love peas. These are a sugar snap pea and a spring blush pea. Okay. Yeah, literally half my tray <laughs> in peas, but that's okay. So I also, um, which I don't think I'm going to have enough room now, but we'll see. I also wanted to start more chamomile and more oregano. Um, I was thinking about doing a, another round of Moon and Stars watermelon because I don't think I had any germinate. I was also thinking about doing more celosia because, again, I had really poor germination. I was thinking about doing more Cosmos because I killed mine on accident. I definitely want to start more black cherry tomatoes because I don't know if any black cherries survived that whole debacle. And I'm okay with any slicer. I'm okay with any paste tomato. Whatever I find when I buy seed starts, I don't care. I have to have black cherry tomatoes. So these are a must. Um, I didn't have any pineapple tomatillos uh, sprout, so I'm going to try that again. I don't remember if I had any ground cherries sprout, so I'm going to try that again. I want to grow the um, Clemson, cr the Crimson Clover, <laughs> um, and I don't think that this has to be started. I think you could just throw this seed. It's a self-seeding um, plant, so I think you could just throw it out in the garden and it'll grow, but I'm going to start them anyway just for funsies. And then in this cup, I have a few more seeds down here. These are um, Blue Queen Butterfly Pea Seeds. They said, the instructions said to uh, scarify, which means to like put a little nick in this in the hard shell of the seed and then to let it soak overnight. So that's what I'm doing. I have to leave a row open for that. So let's see, how many spots do I have? Let's prioritize here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. <laughs> let's do the Apricotta Cosmos. And then I have room for one more. I'll definitely be able to buy oregano. I'll definitely be able to buy chamomile. Let's do, uh, let's do, let's do chamomile. I know I'll be able to buy it, but I love chamomile and I want as much of it as possible. So this is what we're gonna do. Okay, fun. This is all done. So we'll go ahead and give this one its own little light too. I need to get a, bottom, a tray to put it into bottom water. I'll do that in a few minutes. And I think I will probably also go ahead and give everything a spritz. Oh, you know what? I didn't leave a spot for the, um, the butterfly peas, but that's okay. I've got a couple of freestanding trays that I'll be able to throw it in. That's, that's no big deal. That's funny though. All right, I just wanted to give everything a little overhead spritz, that way even bottom water and I'll know everything got watered in. And yeah, so now we wait and see. So we did a couple of experiments today together. We did um, the soil tests here with the peas. 
with the two different um, bagged mixes that I purchased this year to try and figure out which one is the problem child, if either. And then we also started another tray of seeds, but this time we did it using a garden soil that I had delivered. Um, and I know that it's a good soil. I've already been growing things in it outside. I know that it's a good soil. So the only thing is, is it too dense to start seeds in? That's the question. Especially these little tiny itty bitty seeds that really need to be started indoors and would struggle being direct sown outside. Will they germinate? That's the question. So stay tuned. Subscribe, please, if you have not already to see the results of these tests. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today while I cleaned up my homesteading room and got everything prepared and organized for this upcoming season. I feel very, very ready to tackle the garden and all of the projects, the canning, the dehydrating, everything that's associ associated with it. And guys, I just, I'm so grateful to you guys for following along, for watching my videos, um, for engaging with me down in the comments and for just overall supporting me and my channel. I thank you guys so very much. Um, I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Have faith and keep moving forward. Bye.